Hey guys, Evans here. Uh, <clears throat> at work, as you guys see still. Um, just wrapping up. But I'm really, really excited um, to chat with you guys today. Forgive me, I know I haven't shown any cooking stuff in the last couple of days. Just, you know, came to work a little early um, the last couple of days. And I ate simple stuff, you know, for breakfast. I had the P28 bread with toast and peanut butter, um, and peanut butter and cheese one day. Um, and that was breakfast, you know. So sometimes, you know, as you are... Um, you know, going through the fitness journey, you have those days and opportunities where you have a ton of time or you have the 20 minutes you know, needed to prep your whole day. And then other times you just don't. You know, you may wake up a little early or your schedule may get shifted. Um, and when those opportunities or those things come up, you, you still your body still needs what it needs, irrespective of what's going on in your day and your life. You know, so you just make it up. Sometimes you don't eat breakfast at seven. You eat it at nine. Um, you're not going to die. Your metabolism is not going to shut down because you ate a little bit later. You just ate a little bit later. Um, but you still got to get everything else in now through the course of the day. So that's been my last couple of days, and that's the reason why I haven't posted anything. But I'm really excited to finish the conversation that I had or we had with um, Sean and TJ. And um, <clears throat> in that conversation, we were talking about discipline. And it was kind of birthed through, you know, Sean making fun of the fact that I use uh, measuring spoons to measure out my um, sunflower seeds, my peanuts, my peanut butter. Um, you know, I weigh everything and those kind of things. And he's like, look, you know, I have the discipline to exercise, you know, but in reality, I'm not, you know, I just don't know how you do it. And it can almost seem, you know, super or abnormal. But the name of the game is really um, is not that I'm hyper disciplined or even disciplined above anyone else. What it is really is there's a period of time that you have to discipline yourself long enough to develop the habit. And that's in anything. You know, I was listening to this uh, audio book and it's talking about habit development. And they say that Michael Phelps, you know, um, was in the pool six hours a day, seven days a week, you know. And initially it's like, oh, I got to wake up. I got to go to the pool. I got to exercise. I got to perform. And for him, he thought, hey, um, everybody else is doing it five days a week or six days a week. If he puts that one extra day in, he has a 52-day advantage on everybody else in the pool. Well, did it work? Right now, Michael Phelps is the leader in um, in Olympic medals of all time. So I'm guessing the idea worked. But for us, it's not a matter of, you know, going in and saying, you know, we're trying to do something crazy like six hours of exercise. It's really it's figuring out what the one thing is. You know, so for all of us, there is that one variable. If we can tweak that one variable, we'll accelerate our results. And, you know, maybe his meal planning is that one variable or prepping your meals every day is that one variable. Whatever it is, all you have to do is discipline yourself long enough until the pain subsides. So for all of us, there is this monotony tied to it there's this boredom that kicks in there's this frustration there's all these little things that kick in that says ah stop it's it's our flesh is our desire to kind of chill out and back out but if we push through that um and and i wish that there was a magic formula you know in personal growth and development that's kind of like the field i'm in more than i'm in fitness really um in personal growth and development, we try to put formulas. We try to say, hey, if you do 21 days consistently, it's going to create the habit. We try to say, hey, if you do 30 days consistently, it'll create the habit. And we've seen people do six months and pop out. you know. And so it's like, why is that happening and why are these habits not being developed? Well, depending on how long it took to, to develop the habit that you're trying to create a new one to overcome, it's the amount of time not equal, but it's going to take more time potentially to overcome this bad habit. Meaning, you know, uh, um, if you just got a car and you just start driving with a cell phone, well, you don't have a lot of time in to develop the habit of driving with a phone on your ear. So to break that habit doesn't take as long. But if you've been living a certain way and eating a certain way and, and moving a certain way for a period of time, it's going to take a period of time, whoever the time is, to, to, to do it. What I realize is that um, many times what we do, whether it's conscious or subconscious, is we just straight sabotage ourselves. 
And what I mean is, if it takes 21 days, if it takes 32 days, if it takes 66 days, um, in the book, The One Thing, they said they did a study, and it was a college um, um, age uh, kids, I guess is what you call them, or adults, and um, they said it took them, you know, between anywhere between six or, or like uh, 23 days and 235 days to develop the a habit. And their average, their sweet spot was somewhere around the, um, the, the, the 66 day mark. But what people don't realize is that every time you break whatever your habit is, you restart the time clock. So I know people who go, man, I've been trying for like 15 years. I've been trying for 10 years. I've been trying for five years. You know, I was doing really good for this amount of time. And then, boop, you know, I went right back. And I mean, we've, we're blessed. We've been able to help a lot of people uh, um, over the years. You know, our goal this year is to, you know, have 200 people that we're helping through personal training and uh, metabolic coaching. But, you know, over time, we've helped probably 2,000 people. And, you know, almost every consultation we do... People have already done a program, you know, you just list them and they've done it for a period of time. And and with many of them, they've had some results and then they fell back. And it's like, well, if you had results, why did you fall back? Well, you know, I just got back to what I was doing before. And I believe that there was these leaks. We talked about diet leaks before where you add a little bit of syrup, you add a little bit of uh, um barbecue sauce and all these other things, I think that what happened was there are some leaks in their habits developing or in their discipline. And because they had these discipline leaks, then they never fully developed the habit, even though they did it over time. So, you know me, I love analogies. So an analogy is, you know, I go to the soda machine and uh, um, I want to get some water and I put 90 cents in there, but it says a dollar, you know, and I go every day and I put 90 cents in but it says a dollar on there. And I do it for a whole year. A year later, I spend $350, but um, I don't ever get water out of this machine. Somebody else comes behind me, they put a full dollar bill in there, and they get 90 cents change. And I'm like, God, what, why, why are they so blessed? You know, and it's not that one is blessed over the other. I never paid the full price. You know, so... To develop the habit to be successful um, in fitness is not about being this so strict, disciplined person. It's about developing the habit initially. So take your 30 days, 60 days, whatever amount of time you need to take, but take the time you need to get the habit developed. Once the habit's developed, it's not thinking. You don't, it's not energy. It's not, oh, you know, I got to weigh this. It's, it's, it's second nature. It's no different than brushing your teeth or putting on deodorant or anything else that you do to maintain um, your health from a holistic standpoint. You know, because um, if you don't brush your teeth, you know, that's still poor health on a dental level. So, but you don't go, oh, I got to brush my teeth today. You know, you just get up, you wash your face, you brush your teeth, you just do what you need to do and you get moving on your day. And that's how, you know, the nutrition component can be if you go through your grind period. So, I want to switch over, you know, um, just kind of finish that. So it's like I, I mentioned, you know, but Evans, what do you do if you go to a birthday party or barbecue? And, you know, and I say I just go in. I, I enjoy myself, but I plan in my habit. So my habit is right now six days of eating really well and one day of about three hours of not so well, you know, and that's my habit. You know, my habit is six and one, you know, sometimes if, you know, I like to maintain my leanness and because of things I cannot control, I can't afford the five and two deal because then I'll just start blowing up. But um, for me, six and one works really well. Uh, um, if I need to be a little more aggressive, then I may have to dial it down to like one meal instead of one window or maybe go to 14 days or 13 days and then have a free window one of those days. And I've done it all and cut all throughout each of those uh, methods. But that is my habit. So it's, it's fixed. It's, you know, Friday night or, or Saturday or sometime of the weekend, I'm going to do my go in period and the rest of the time I'm be disciplined uh, um, or follow my traditional habit. So it's not work from that standpoint. So I just want, you know, be mindful of that self-sabotaging because we see it happen all the time. And one way I think people sabotage and without even thinking about it is just not going through the process, you know, um, I mean, everything you have to do, there's a process that's put in place. And I mean, you could buck the system, you can fight the process, but gravity is irrespective of the individual. 
You know, so if you if you drop the president out of a plane, he's going to fall. And if you drop the top criminal out of a plane, he's going to fall. You drop the pope out of a plane, he's going to fall. The high priest out of a plane, he's going to fall. I mean, gravity works irrespective of a person. So when you engage into creating this habit and this discipline, remember that as unique as you are, you're not really that different from a gravity or principle development standpoint. So I see a lot of times, you know, you know, you could just pick at the thing, you know, um, somebody, you, let's say they like rice and I'm like, hey, let's let's cut rice. And everybody knows I'm not anti rice. I put rice in my meals all the time. I'm not really anti any food uh, unless it's going to, you know, um, cause disease, you know, um, which is like high fructose corn syrup and partially hydrogenated oils, which is more ingredients than food. Um, but, you know, let's say we say, hey, we're at a time we, get, we need to cut rice and you go, well, you know, understand I'm Asian or I'm Indian or, you know, I'm, I'm West Indian. You know, we got rice in a lot of our dishes being Jamaican. You know, it's tough. Well, your body doesn't carry your West Indian. Anatomy physiology doesn't change based on nationality. So you just got to cut rice for that period. But what happens is people cut rice for a little bit and they sneak it back in. And they do this for a little bit and they sneak it back in. And, you know, and they go, I, don't, I just don't understand why it's not working because you're sneaking it back in. You know, in their mind, they think that they're following their plan and they're feeling super disciplined, but in reality, they're not, you know. So I would just say, you know, um, if you are investing um, in your health and fitness, um, whether you're going to a gym and you're paying a membership for it. And, you know, um, I did that for a couple of years and no changes in my life because there's no accountability or you're paying somebody like, you know, we do the personal training, nutritional coaching, you know, or, you know, you go into a chiropractor or, or orthopedic surgeon and he's like, Hey, I need you to do these exercises. Compromising a little bit costs you consistently over time. So it's better to say, Hey, I am, hyper disciplined for my period of time and I take my break when I need it than it is to sneak it in a little bit of a day. You know, one of these days I'll do another one on insulin resistance. And one of the things we learned is that um, when you look at insulin or sugar from a, from a, um, a hormonal response level, what sugar does, it produces an insulin spike. And it doesn't matter if you did a little bit of sugar or a whole lot of sugar, a little bit of sugar produces an insulin spike. And I don't know how many people I talk to, and after dinner, they want to eat something sweet, you know, and they don't understand why they eat so healthy and they can't get results. And I'm sitting in the consultation, you know, um, and I know the answer. I know, like, why. I, to me, I'm like, this is so easy. And it's easy for me because I do it all the time. It's their job is probably not easy for me, you know, so I have total respect for that. You know, my accountant's like, this is easy for me. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. So, um, you know, but for me, I know what the answer is. The answer is you're creating a hormonal response that tells your body to burn fat all, I mean, hold on to fat all night long, you know, all because they had this little sweet deal and they thought, well, it wasn't that many calories, it wasn't that much sugar, uh, it wasn't that much carbs or whatever, but they didn't understand that your body runs on hormones. So, hey, let's commit to not sabotaging that stuff. Let's plan it out. Um, let's pre-plan it. And I love it. I was at an event at Wesley. Someone said, Evans, can you have um, you know, red wine in your meal plan? I was like, absolutely. As long as I know how much you start with, we can make modifications and fit it in. Because if you cannot make a lifestyle out of a plan that you're doing, then you're not going to sustain it. The only way that really happens, uh, or you're not going to sustain it, period. Now, you can get some results, you're just not going to sustain it. So if you like a glass of wine, then it's about, okay, how do I control the wine variable in order to get my results? you like me, you like pizza, how do I control this pizza variable to get the results I want? You know, and, and, and you moderate that. And it's not about, hey, you know, I ate a cookie, so I'm going to run for a mile. Um, that, that's hogwash. You know, it's about, you know, creating this systematic or this, this environment in your body that can handle um, the extra little bits. And before you know it, I mean, your body starts, starts transforming and you never really have to give up you know, a treat or a delight, but you manage them in there. So I'm hoping that helps. You know, the name of the game is not being very disciplined. It's just being disciplined on that one thing over a period of time to develop the habit that you want. And once you have that discipline and that habit in place, your habit will take over, you know, and then you can go after something else, you know. So, so less is actually more. 
because you know we always talk about here the mind, the conscious mind, subconscious mind. You know, once you transfer from conscious to subconscious, you're not thinking about it. You know, and because you're not thinking about it, it's like me when I type, I think. I'm like, so you do not want to hire me to be your typer, you know. But like you know, when I have someone doing administration, I want them to not be thinking and typing. You know, I want them, and 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 stuff gets done. You know, so you have to figure out, okay, what's my plan? How can I be consistent with my habits? And then, you know, nutrition, fitness, maintaining health, outside of making tweaks based on hormones and other physical limitations, it's a, it's a pretty easy component um, to keep in there. But don't sabotage yourself. Be really, really conscious. If you're like me and you, you like to eat, um, you have to, like, log it for a period of time. I know that there is this idea, and I thought I was done, but I'm really done after this comment. But there's this idea that I can just intuitively eat. I can just, you know, kind of eyeball it, and I'll make good decisions. Man, the only time that can help you, the only time I recommend that um, is few uh, and, and, and far in between. Meaning, if you're traveling, you know, so if you're traveling and um, you already have your bases covered and I was inspired by somebody that I'm going to do like a traveling video um, as well. But if you're traveling, you already have your bases covered, then yes. When I go out to eat, I'm not like, hey, I, I need you to make sure this is exactly six ounces of chicken. You know, that's kind of awkward. So, you know, in those kind of places, yes. You know, I can do that a little bit because a little bit over or a little bit under, my body's going to crush it. And so would everybody else's. Your body doesn't work on exact numbers. But if you estimate everything, you're not going to fall within the window that you need to make sure you have measurable results. So if you're in an active, what we call fat loss phase, then... So, uh, um, so that's something just to be mindful of. You know, if you're in that active, um, you know, fat loss phase, then... Hey, I need to be a little bit more precise. So if I'm traveling, I am measuring. I'm, I mean, I am, you know, I could wing it a little bit or if I'm taking a, a, a diet break. For some people developing the discipline, um, especially when you have lots of stresses in your life, then it can be a little bit more challenging to, you know, get back in the zone. So um, we may, you know, create these psychological breaks where, you know, OK, I'm supposed to eat eggs. I'm supposed to eat chicken. I'm supposed to do this kind of stuff. Or when you're first developing the habits. So the habit may not be weighing and measuring for you. Uh, the discipline may be just eating five or six meals, eating a protein, a carb, and a fat. You know, eating you know uh, um, on a schedule or whatever it may be, depending on you and your coach. So that may be your first thing, and, and then you just eyeball. Oh, that's about a palm. That's about a hand. And we've had people lose. I mean, one lady right now, she's seventy five, seventy six years old. She's down fifty to fifty five pounds. Um, which is really awesome, and she's never weighed anything during the entire journey, you know. So we were able to use a consistent measurement. Her hand size doesn't change, and she kind of uses it based on her hand sizes, and we do the measurements that way, and it works extremely well. But we, ha we have to have something to control it. Uh, um, so if, I'm, if I need a mental break or if I'm traveling or if I'm brand spanking new and I'm new to different foods, um, then we may say, hey, let's just use this as a, a way to – get you in, in in your goal set. So I hope that added a lot of value to you guys. We're super excited about continuing to add value. You better believe either tomorrow, because um, I'm not ushering, so I'll be, you know, um, got a little bit more time. Or Monday, I'm back to cooking, and I'm really excited about it. So I'll be taking my food out today uh, to defrost it, because we're kind of low on the chicken, and uh, I like chicken. So uh, um, And I'll be buying some eggs, hitting produce junction, and all that kind of stuff. So we'll have quite a bit ready for the week, and then I just know, okay, my proteins are done, majority of my carbs are done, and then it's just my vegetables and my breakfast um, throughout the day. I have enough pancake mix with the protein pancakes. Um, I have my bars and my shakes and everything else um, to be able to execute um, with success. So remember, proper prior planning prevents poor, poor performance. And, uh, um, you know, we love you guys. and We're excited about helping you move forward. So don't sabotage yourself. Follow your recommendations. If you're paying a professional, listen you know, they do what they say do. Therefore, you can get the results that you truly desire. And look forward to seeing you guys at the next episode of Cooking with Evans.